So recently I've been playing the seamless co-op mod for Elden Ring with the boys and a topic of weapon types came up. One of my friends said that the daggers and fist weapons had to be among the worst weapon types in the game due to their lackluster range. That didn't sit well with me. Sure, it has no range, but it does have upsides, right? In the right hands every weapon has the potential of being good. And that's basically what this video is about. I wanted to see if I could beat Elden Ring with daggers only. And only that. Totally not a preparation for Shadow of the Earth Tree. With that all being said, let's get into the rules. I only deal damage with daggers. Duh. No spirit ashes or summons. No use of incantations. And lastly, I cannot get over rune level 125. For starter class, I took Wretch. I took Wretch because I wanted to start with no weapons. Sure, I get bonk, but it's a dagger rune, so I can't bonk. The keepsake I took was the Lance Between rune, as I am planning to also get every item in this file. This is the only way to get your hands on it. So, the first order of business is to get my hands on any dagger. And of course, if you think of daggers in Elden Ring, you immediately think of the Reduvia. So, I skedaddle to Najirus. Killed me in two hits, and I couldn't really do anything. My first plan is to let Yura solo him, but... That didn't work out as well as I thought it would. He killed me again, until I figured out that this was a fool's errand. So I had to think of another dagger to get. So I scrolled through the wiki and found the dagger. Like, the weapon, not the weapon type. It is available in the round table and is sold by the Twin Maiden Husks for 400 runes. Which led me to another mystery. How do I get runes without killing enemies? Sell some Roa. But my dumbass was farming Godric soldiers fighting demi humans. It still took me a little while, but I emerged victorious and got the best dagger in the game. Just what was FromSoft thinking? Put this absolute monster of a dagger this early in the game? I'm not here to question the genius mind of Miyazaki, but to beat Elden Ring with some cutlery. Now that I'm in possession of a couple of... Wait... Wrong castle! And now that I'm in possession of a couple of pointy medals, I farmed some gear until I had a full set of armor, and then went to Stormville Castle, where I proceeded to mop the floor with Market. One of the things I notice about daggers is that these things go fast. Stupidly fast. The fight was over before I knew it kinda fast. So yeah, Godric... I command thee. So yeah, Godric died really fast too, he is the first boss after all. But it went by so fast. I am really impressed with how good daggers are. That could be an early game thing. Or a Reduvia thing. I am the Lord of all that is golden. I later helped Kenneth Hyde to reclaim his fort so I could get Blood Slash and the left half of the Dactus Medallion. Since I am running an arcane build, going for bleed on my second weapon might be the right move at this current moment. I killed Grail the totally intentional way for some runes and got the right half of the Dectus medallion. I also want to show me fighting Radon, but I accidentally stopped recording when fighting him. As you can see right now, me being a chair watching some ghosts duke it out, instead of me fighting Radon. He was 
the first real challenge of the run, since I wasn't used to running daggers. Here's where the redound footage would have been, if only I had the footage. I beelined to the Black Knife Assassin for the Black Knife that I thought could be useful for the Destined Death effect. But 18 faith is needed, and now I don't want to use it anymore. With two shard bearers down, I finally gained access to Leandel. So I traveled to the gates and fought the Draconic Tree Sentinel, who proved to be quite the challenge. After two attempts of dealing minimal damage, I had the idea of getting some levels and trying again later. I experimented a lot with Ashes of War. Hey yo, what the fuck? Now I deal a lot more damage and beat him on my third attempt. Entering Leyendel, I immediately went for the west capital rampart side of Grace. I beat the gargoyle and made my way to Raya Lucaria. Reason being that I believed I might need to respect it in the future. Rada Beast is immune to bleed and my build centers around it. So having access to respecting might help me, should my current build not be dealing enough damage against them. With Renalo down, I went back to Leandel and beat Goldfree. Since he isn't the type to aggressively approach anyone, I just took my sweet time to beat him. Morgot, one of the best bosses in this run hands down, he was probably the most fun in a boss I had running this build. The only issue I had fighting him was that he went down so fucking fast. Look at this transition from stage 1 to stage 2. a fourth of his health that I took for free. Sure, I could have not done that, but I did. With Morgoth down, I was starting to think about what ending I wanted to achieve. I was really on the fence about doing another chaos ending, but I settled down for the age of true golden order because the Noble Gold Mask is a really cool guy and has a way with words. Jokes aside, I was progressing both quest lines, but then this happened. I also got a weird glitch to happen when I stayed in the falling animation, it killed me after about 30 seconds, but I still thought it was kind of funny.
before beginning with this run, I thought the Fire Giant would have been a huge roadblock in this run. Him being able to roll away, his huge HP pool, and my non-existent range. That was a slaughter. He went down before I knew it. I never ran a bleed build before this run and learned that it's not half bad. Up next, the crumbling Fire Missoula. Godskin duo went down pretty fast, thanks to them being very sleepy boys. And at the end of Fire Missoula, I ran into the first major roadblock, Draconic Tree Sentinel 2. Just kidding, it was Malekith. My daggers were too short to hit him, so I had to rely on jump attacks to hit him. And for Malekith, his agility is what scared me the most. After a little longer than I'd like to admit, I beat Malekith. With Malekith's defeat, I burnt the Earth Tree, turned the beautiful capital of Leandel to the Ashen Capital. I also finished up the noble Goldmask's quest for his Mending Rune of Perfect Order, and his Rip. And now, Sir Gideon. Gideon proved to be a pushover, like he usually is. You fought well until now. Gideon proved to be a pushover like he usually is, and died in my first attempt. Godfrey was also quite a challenge. After some time I managed to get into his second stage, and died. A lot. The Horaloo. But after a little less time than Malakath. He went down as well. I finally made it to the final boss, John Elton Ring. I was the most confident during this fight. I beat Horaloo, so who's John to stop me now? And when it dawned on me, he is immune to bleed. The one thing I relied a little bit too much on during this run. So I went into research mode and learned the following. He is susceptible to freezing, poison and scarlet rot. Ultimately, I believe that Frostbite might be the better choice for this fight. Armed with this knowledge, I worked a bit on my build and gave my Great Knife the Cold Infusion. That way, I could use Freezing Mist, proc Frostbite, go absolutely apeshit on John Elden Ring, and holy shit, he's at 50% now. Whatever I do, just don't get greedy. This is the way. John is smooth sailing now, 
and now it's elven fish time. Honestly, I had no complaints about it, except when the damned fish keeps running away from me whenever I tickle it a bit. And a quick little tip for the people struggling with elden fish. When you begin its fight, it usually does a fire breath attack. You can just run behind him and deal some quick hits on it. Honestly, elden fish wasn't that hard of a fight if you don't count the over 50% of time you're going to spend chasing it, but still. I also killed the Mo Lester, so I can gain access to the DLC when it comes out. And now I am ready for the DLC. So anyways, a friend of mine told me I make horrible outros, 